Now, the world-renowned writer and apartheid activist Nat Nakasa's remains is being laid to rest in his hometown of Chesterville outside Durban as we speak. Our reporter Desen Tatia is at the Chesterville Cemetery and we're going to cross to him live now. Desen, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Can you describe to us the scene there at the cemetery as we're speaking? Yes, in fact, uh, it's been, it was quite a, quite a moving scene here at the cemetery. The, the culmination of many, many months of hard work uh, by the committee that was responsible for bringing Nat Nakasa's remains home, but also just for the family who've waited almost 50 years to actually see this day. So all in all, it was quite, uh, quite, quite moving for them. And I think all of them are a little more content today knowing that, uh, that their son and, and brother is, uh, is resting peacefully um, in, in his gravesite here in Chesterville, his hometown. In fact, uh, now that the ceremony has concluded, it's also an opportune, opportune time to reflect on what it's actually taken to bring Nat Nakasa back. And uh, with me, I've got Temen Kosi Ngobo from the Itekwini municipality, who's going to shed some light uh, on that topic. Uh, Mr Ngobo, thanks for taking the time to, to join us. It's been a very long journey, as we know, and publicly over the past few months as well, uh, just with the committee talking about its business and what it's actually taken. But you've been there firsthand. Can you take us through the journey itself and what it's taken to get to this point? It has taken us almost 24 months. There was a time where we believed, naively so, now we know, that this was a straightforward matter, something that you can just do overnight. But as soon as we learned that, in actual fact, different laws will apply in the United States of America, then that's when we realized that we needed more than a postcard process, but also a process that was going to involve the courts there. Now, you, you, you will remember that there was a space of about a month or so since we brought him back and this date of burial. It was because we were never sure if we were going to be successful to bring him back here. So when we landed in America, that's when we realized how things difficult were. As part of an advanced team, we had to negotiate with a number of uh, uh, government officials. But then over and above that also, we needed to go through the court system because in that country it's only through a court of law that you can be able to disinter a person. Over and above that, they wanted a number of things. Like for instance, we had to convince them and show evidence that there is a person, a service provider here that was going to be ready, uh, willing and having been paid to provide the service and also the proof of transport and many other things really that were involved. So it was not there for a straightforward matter. There was a time when I thought this was not going to happen. And also when you look into, into uh, America as opposed to here, for us death is a continuation of life but in a different form. But there they make a very strict distinction between a living and a dead person and for them they don't even allow the remains of a person of a dead person to come anywhere closer uh, to people who are still living so these are the things that we had to encounter but because we knew how important it was for this family and all of us right, to have the closure number one for instance they had to see because remember we're talking about 50 years here they had to see where their child their son their brother died where